Welcome to a funny thing called business. This is where four business owners with over 30 years collective experience under our belts share the capers, the triumphs and the lighter side of running a small business and how we all now avoid perilous customer chaos and pitfalls. So we have Claire Worley here. Darren Angley. Kate Curry. Pete Morgan. Welcome, guys. It's great to be here and seeing you. Obviously, we're still not seeing each other in person, but it's still lovely to see you over that uh, now world-famous video platform. So what I wanted to talk about today was, as we are coming out of lockdown now in little bits here and there, I want to ask you what you've learned during lockdown I'd love you to share, first off, what's the best thing you've learned for your business during this time in lockdown? Um, well, I mean, one thing I've learned is that I don't have to leave the house, which is pretty perfect for me. <laughs> if I can get that down to not having to get out of bed, then even better, then we'll be on a real win. <laughs> but... Well, just don't use Zoom, <laughs> yeah. and then you don't have to leave your bed. Absolutely. But uh, no, in all seriousness, I think one of the things that I've really miss in business and kind of now value a lot more is, is the face-to-face meetings I know everyone can kind of we're always complaining about meetings whether they're virtual or in person you know and the sort of whether meetings are important and all that kind of stuff but really when it comes to trying to do business together being able to sit down and face-to-face in the same room breathing the same virus fueled air you know it's it's <laughs> still not you know you can't beat it it's harder to do that even with zoom it's like another level isn't it it's like everyone's still in yeah. their own real world but um staring at a little window of each other it's very different from being in the room talking pointing at the same piece of paper the same screen or whatever absolutely that's funny darren because i, I wrote down uh in preparation for this that you know how great networking is virtually because I've really enjoyed doing that, but with a huge caveat of it is not as good as meeting in person. Yeah, it, it just isn't. It's nice to avoid that, you know, um, you know, to and from uh, time that we've won back, but it still doesn't meet people in, uh, meeting people in person. That's <laughs> You can't be oh. in person. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> peeping Paul Merson is yeah is is a great bit. Yeah, it's the thing I miss. But I think it's that you know it, it is really when you have a Zoom call at the end of it. I don't know if you find this, but when you click like end meeting and you suddenly drop back into the, the world around you, kind of thing. It's a bit. It's like quite jarring. There's no kind of subtle fade out of the meeting and oh, so, so no. pleasant you. See you later. Walk down the street. It's um. You know, it's just kind of end. That's that was that meeting done, which on hand is yeah. good, but it, it's just also kind of really a jarring from one world to the, the the virtual world to the real world again, and suddenly you find yourself back in your bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I think I think what I've found difficult as well as you have noticed, it's not talking over people. There's there's no natural gaps anymore in the conversations. You feel like you've got to fill everything, or at least that's how I feel as as a chair in in a lot of networking meetings. That's actually a really good point as well because there is that thing where when you're sitting in a room with somebody, you can have a kind of a comfortable silence. But I found even like doing like social kind of Zoom calls with friends having a beer when it goes silent it's like oh it's, it's, it's slightly different isn't it it's like it doesn't feel so comfortable have a lot of connection you know there's all these kind of things that kind of make you semi-panic almost you know so yeah yeah it's a bit a bit unnatural really yeah yeah totally true yeah. all you need to do to create that panic is to just you know say about what your business is He's do doing, that. and, and <laughs> that's it. People exactly. People think, oh, he's gone. That's it. No, oh, we lost the, oh, we've lost the connection. That you know, <laughs> the amount of times I've wanted to do that in a Zoom call, just kind of sit really still and pretend you've gone, you're on, you're like buffering or something. Oh, man, I'm getting so fed up as Zoom clangers now. I'm just like, oh, come on, I need to just meet some real people now. <laughs> I had one one Zoom call recently, and several things happened. And first of all, um. The, the screen froze just as uh, she was blowing her nose. So she had this tissue, kind of like, top of, top of her nose. I was like, oh, she's having, 
Tell me some bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, see, this is something TV presenters have had to get over since the introduction of Sky Plus, where we can all pause <laughs> in the middle of, yeah. you know, but it, it, we're still in that stage where we've got to get used to being frozen in a really awkward, you know, facial expression. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a, a serious answer to your question as to what I've learned for my business is taking it from being service-based to product-based that's been my big thing of because one of the services i have is i come out to clients and i record and, that, and indeed that's what we normally do but it's made me look more at the what the products are that i can offer people that mean i don't have to leave the house that mean i don't have to go anywhere and look at that a little bit more and, and what can i offer from a you know from a re remote perspective presumably pete yours hasn't had to change that much no i mean in fact it's it's got you know i've i've had since the the lockdown began i've probably been busier than i've ever been before because more people have wanted to either learn about podcasting or start podcasting because it's the thing that they said right i'll do that when i've got time and of course at the beginning of the lockdown there was an awful lot of people who were like okay well i've got some time on my hands what is it I'm, I'm going to do with this time? And now as we're kind of emerging out of lockdown, I'm kind of seeing a change in that, but not a great deal of change because I don't think everyone's going to suddenly rush out into the streets, you know, once we're told that we can. Um, but, yeah, it, it, the only thing I can't do is is go to clients and, and record. Uh, but everything yeah. else, I've, you know, all of my clients' podcasts have continued throughout lockdown that's nobody's missed that's a single brilliant. episode brilliant that's great to hear so guys i'm going to make you all groan with the next question i've got for you because it's another corona catchphrase <laughs> um what what will you take away into the new normal kate what about you okay um well i suppose there's a there's a few things really um one of the one of the things that I've really really missed, like I say, is, is sort of being with people. And I think I definitely work so much better being with people. So I had to work on a logo recently, and then realised, goodness, this. I think this might look like a pair of bum cheeks. What's going on here? I've completely <laughs> gone mad. And you know, when I'm working with people, obviously you just get the create the creative process. You can end up just going down to weird weird rabbit holes without people to sort of really work with you to pull things back around. But having said that, I do think these online meetings have been really great. It, it's, it has streamlined business in a lot of ways because you're not sat in traffic, uh, you know, trying to get somewhere. You can fit more meetings into your schedule more easily. Um, so I think I'll be doing more of those, but less than I'm doing right now, but more than I was doing before. So, yeah, that's good. And so, Kate, the all-important question is, did the logo look like a pair of bum cheeks? Oh, man, I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> and it really had nothing to do with bottoms, so that, that was oh. a real, real concern. Yeah. <laughs> did you present it to them anyway? And then they picked it. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you've been spending too much time with the kids. That's what the problem was. Yeah, yeah. Bum yeah. cheeks, yeah. bum yeah. cheeks. Really rubbing up on me. Yeah, <laughs> Darren, what will you be taking into? Um, I'm not going to say it again that you know that Corona catchphrase. Uh, probably a lot of learnings from Key Stage One. You know, so <laughs> definitely brushed up on my uh, my timetables and my you know. And your phonetics. Yeah, and my phonetics. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm getting that down now. So. You know, I've been doing a lot of learning anyway. I mean, I've been, you know, getting some good advice from a very good business coach. So I've been thinking a lot about, you know, how to get more streamlined, more processes into into my business. So um, that's, you know, I'm looking forward to the fruit of those um, labors, if you like. But it's kind of, you know, it's almost yeah. like we all know there's not enough hours in the day. And as Kate said, at least outside of the... Um, those real world meetings, you do get the time, the travel time back when we're having like virtual meetings and things like that. So using time more effectively, I guess, is a, is a biggie. Yeah, I'll, uh, well, I'll hold you to that, Darren. Mm. You've got a 
you know, plenty of ears listening so we can all keep going. <laughs> <good time. laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And I probably, I probably, I probably miss the kids as well when, when we all go back. Yeah. Home, but, uh, oh, oh, yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah, so I might have to take them to work and uh, homeschool them from, from the office. <laughs> yeah, do you remember when people used to complain about people who took their dog? Uh, now we're all working with our kids. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey what are you taking forward that's been good um I, I think a bit of what darren said of of kind of structuring your day a little bit because i've always worked from home anyway but you do miss that thing like darren was saying you know i'd still go out for meetings and that thing where you'll finish a meeting and you are in the the same place that you were having that meeting and now you're carrying on work. There is no kind of come down time. There's no debrief time. There's no, you know, kind of just get yourself back into the kind of the normal world or the new normal. Yeah. So I, I think that's something I'm going to kind of really work hard on, uh, you know, uh, on maintaining, uh, you know, so I've built in a, a thing that after meetings now I do try and have, even if it's just 15 minutes, just to kind of, even if it's just walk on the back garden with, with the dogs or just, you know, get out of my chair and get out of the office for a, a few minutes. And I'm going to keep trying to do that when everything, you know, when I, you know, keep that, uh, we go back to whatever it is that, that comes next. Uh, yeah. It's just keeping those, idea, those yeah. buffers in place. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and it'll be really interesting to see and hear from you what does happen when we get back to, you know, Whatever happens after... Just we say it, Claire. Just <laughs> say the new normal. Just I say it. I, I need to find my own catchphrase. Let me reword it. Like the, 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 uh, the catch is like the next ordinary. <laughs> Forthcoming ordinary. The new world. It'll be interesting to see if we all do get sucked back into, you know, how busy it was before eventually, and I really hope not. I, I struggled to answer this question, really, when I thought about it, because I do pride myself on having all the systems set up and, you know, a lot of my coaching before was online. Obviously, now it's all gone to online. I wouldn't mind if it all carried on online afterwards. And I think what I, I, I really value networking. Yeah. Um, and I value the connections that I've made. And actually, I suppose one of the things I've learned is that I, I feel like I could have moved anywhere and just done my coaching online. But I now know that that, isn't really for me because I do enjoy all of these connections and I, I I don't believe you would make the same kind of connections just starting from an online basis. Yeah. You know, we, we meet each other in person and know each other offline. That's it. I mean, I, I had that dream when I started out in, in web design back in the 90s. It was like, oh, web design is going to mean we can just work from anywhere. So my, my plan was to just sit on a beach in Thailand and work from there, but... It's just not ever going to be practical, really, to do that. No, because you don't get what you need from it, do you? We need people. We need connection. Yeah. yeah. So I picked the wrong career, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Surely they need uh, web designers in Thailand. Maybe that's what, what? you do. That's it. <laughs> right, see you later. <laughs> Yeah, set up a net networking group in uh, Phuket. Yeah, great. See how that goes down. We'll all come out. We'll all, you know, we'll all attend. It'll be fine. Right. Cool. I we'll be saying. biscuits. <laughs> yes. So what's something that you failed at during this lockdown? Let's get real. Getting properly dressed. I know we talked about that last episode. Well, you're very lucky I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> it really is just... Oh, and even now, because we're so far into it, it really is, oh, just put a T-shirt on or something in your jogging bottoms. Why don't get dressed properly, for goodness sake? You're not leaving the house. You're not going anywhere. No, I've been barefoot for so long. <laughs> How very new it's age. Real. 
I like being barefoot. Um, one thing that I have definitely failed at is homeschooling my five-year-old. He's gone back to school this week. He went back on Monday. And I just said to the teacher, I'm just so grateful because he spent two and a half months watching Octonauts. <laughs> you know, the underwater world. I've even learned about siphonophores. You need that information, don't you? So that's good. Exactly. <laughs> My five-year-old taught me that. So he's he's been learning, but I've definitely failed at the homeschooling. And to be fair... I've I made my peace with it a long time ago. Um, if my kids want to go on holiday and have food and, and live in a nice house, then you know we have to work. And they'll pick up their schooling when when it's when it's ready. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we're all in the same boat with that, though. Trying to juggle the um, various as- aspects of our lives that we've been so good at keeping separate up until now. And uh, my, my children are completely feral now. We just leave food, we leave food in a bowl of water out and it disappears. So I assume they're still alive in the house somewhere. But it's, um, it, it's really difficult. And, um, you know, they don't, they don't listen to me. <laughs> they don't listen to me. <laughs> I try, but it's not really uh, working. So, um, but, but it, I think in a lot of ways, We've all had to sort of learn to accept that everybody's in the same boat. Everyone has, um, you know, kids that walk in and interrupt their Zoom meetings and start flinging stuff at them and things like that. You know, it just happens. I think it's quite nice, really, to accept that everybody has that other side to them that you don't normally see. So, except, um, except for those clients who don't accept that <laughs> and get yeah. kind of put out by the... Uh... The fact have that you, you know, you know, that, the meeting thing. I haven't. I haven't. But I know people who have. It's kind of like they've got. Yeah, really? yeah they've got people who are you know, who are um, you know, they, they've got their life sorted. You know, they've got this. You know, the kids or whatever are all set up with their, their nanny or whatever. I don't know, but um, <laughs> and you know, it's kind of. Who are these people, Darren? <laughs> no, well, they're not people I work with, obviously, but but they're um, you know, and then they're just kind of a bit perturbed when you can't make meetings at eight o'clock in the morning and you know that kind of thing getting interrupted and things so you know it's it's not the nice people that we know but you know, people no out. and i think if there are people in business right now who are treating other other people in that way then it, running your own business is choosing who you want to work with yeah. when and and it always should be we get to make our own rules so i don't like the sound of those people no no kids interrupting and it. where are we going to put our kids <laughs> exactly. in a cupboard exactly. yeah Can we yeah. talk about this <laughs> yeah i tried that but they, they always got out so just had to get on with it yeah did you not try the old it's just like harry potter did you not try that no <laughs> no no no, 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 no. go for that okay I think the thing I failed at the most was trying to live a carb-free lifestyle. That is the thing I've absolutely failed at. Any kind of healthy eating will tend to go out of the window because you just think, right, what what can I get from the supermarket? What is still available? Only white bread. Well, fine, white bread it will have to be then, yeah. and we'll just yeah. have to go, you know, with a bit with a bit of that. You know, they've only got custard creams. Yeah, well, that's, I'll just have to live off them. For the next week, it's fine. I'm sure I'll get by. But I think that the, any kind of pretension of of healthy eating has uh, has kind of gone by the the wayside a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't be so hard on yourself when you've queued. You know, twenty minutes to get in. Just take what you can. That's right. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> Just take it, whatever it is. Out of the way, Grandma. Let's have that. <laughs> That's been my motto when I uh, visit. Well, I've only I've only gone to the small shops because uh, my husband does the uh, shopping. But yeah, I'm like I'm queuing twenty minutes to get in. Just kids, just grab that. We'll go. Is that they're going to be taking several bottles of gin into the new normal with them as well? Because we can't all yeah. yeah. Yeah, fair yes. amount of booze. That's a that is my new normal now. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I've probably drunk more in, since the lockdown than I'd done in the various months beforehand. I never, certainly, re- very rarely would drink at home, and now 
really is just, oh, I'm going to do a Zoom call with a friend in the evening. Let's get some wine open, shall we? Let's, but, <laughs> like, I don't know whether we're yeah. just trying to make it fancy or whether it's you just like, oh, let's just get through this. Booze will and deaden I... this in some way for me. I, I uh, stopped off to visit um, my daughter's friends in, in the garden last night. Tuesday night, they were offering me wine. I said, I'll never drink in the wake. No, I, I don't drink in the wake. <laughs> Within two minutes, I had a bottle of stuff in my hand and another one. Oh, it was so lovely. But I was like, it's Tuesday night in lockdown. I've just it. <laughs> what does Tuesday even mean? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> So what should I have asked you uh, that I haven't? Are we looking forward to getting back to the uh, old normal, new normal? Because I'm yeah, kind of yeah, not in the <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm with Darren. Yeah, I'm quite happy for it to... I think because we found ways to make this work, it is the thing of mm. what? why do we need to, to go back? Exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy you know. eating eating white bread and drinking gin in the day, and you know, not, not wearing <laughs> trousers. And uh, <laughs> see, I I'm desperate to get back to normal. I've missed my holidays. I've missed uh, things to look forward to at the weekend. Uh, my daughter is really struggling with not seeing her friends and that's impacting on all of us mm. for any glimmer of of normality opening like the zoos the zoos are opening yeah, yeah that's true I'm like yes thank god there's, there's something for us to do and and just for the days to be different yeah yeah absolutely I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the like caravan parks reopening and things like that but i think Pubs are going to be a bit weird from now on for a little while, aren't they? So I don't know. Well, yeah, because that was the because I'm guessing that as and when things do open, there's got to be social distancing involved, and and uh, you know when you've got when you've had six pints of uh, you know baby sham, are you really yeah. you know are you really going to be concerned with with social distancing? You know, you're gonna No, you're gonna want to hug everybody. Exactly, and I mean, I want to hug everybody oh, now. Oh, no. So. <laughs> After baby sham, I'm going to be awful. So, you know, I don't think a pub is the, the place I should be going. No, maybe not. No. <laughs> so also, so, uh, one of the things that's sort of come out of it is how much we got to come to rely on the sort of online sphere to uh, to get by and uh, and to manage our lives and uh, and that kind of thing. And so, from a business point of view, I think that that's quite a key. Thing to implement uh, moving business forward so a lot of the clients that i've worked with have started to ask for more things like you know let's boost up our social media um campaigns let's get our website you know looking more engaging and, and that kind of stuff so um i think that that's one of the things i'm going to sort of change my business to try and um create more opportunities for that sort of work but I really would love people to stop sending me so many emails. I don't know anyone else, but it's like we're starting to like let's just start to think about lockdown, and everyone's just like, "Yeah, business is going again," and oh my god, I'm getting bombarded. So I'm just gonna put it out there: stop sending me so many emails. <laughs> I've had to at least. Oh, you just reminded me, Kate. I've got to send you an email. <laughs> no, I'm reminding it from people that I know that I've got a genuine thing for me. But it's like a lot of it's nearly all people I don't know trying to sell me SEO and. Yeah. random things and I'm like yeah. yeah I appreciate you're trying to draw a business but um, the emails that I really need to read are like way off the bottom of my screen now and it's not even 9 30 in the morning so, uh, <laughs> I think, yeah I, I hear what you're saying Kate <laughs> it's just random random people trying to sell during this time is it's ridiculous for people to think that that is ever going to work. Yeah. I've never met you before. But buy this from me on our first interaction. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what I won't miss is talking about the corona. Mm. <laughs> Although it, it, it has got rid of Brexit talk, hasn't it? <laughs> well, it has, yeah, it has got rid of Brexit, but I am sick of all, all conversations leading to corona. Mm. I say to Rob, like at the weekend, let, let's not talk about the corona. Like within 10 minutes, you're back there and you're like, how, <laughs> that happen? how are we talking about it again? 
See, because we, we made a decision. We just said, right, we'll we get the notifications on our phone. So we listen to a bit of the news in the morning, and I'll look at the kind of news website as I sit at my desk for the first time, and then I get. But apart from that, it we just refuse to talk about it. So we've had to find other things. How do you not talk about because it? Because we just look at we we don't watch a lot of it, we don't read a lot about it, and we're not leaving the house. We're not leaving the house. So what has happened is we have become world experts in homes under the hammer. <laughs> because that becomes so instead of watching breakfast TV when we just sit down and have a cup of tea first thing in the morning, we're watching old episodes of Homes Under the Hammer because it's better than watching yeah. news, news programs must. desperately try and find a new angle in yeah. uh, you know in, in the coronavirus. So that's what we've done. We've just so yeah, um we're uh, you know I'm really good on house in- prices from two thousand and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you never know when that skill's going to come out one day. (laughs) I've just realised, I think, uh, Rob and I talk a lot about holidays, where where we're planning on going next. That's a lot of our conversations. And, and of course, every conversation is helped by, well, we've just had this cancelled and now we can't go there. And so basically I need to find interest (laughs) other than holidays. (laughs) Well, you can always go on holiday in the UK. So have a th- maybe look at that. Yeah, well, as soon as um, I've got uh, Airbnb. Yep. Yeah. I've said as soon as hotels are open, book me in one with the spa and where they're just going to do all our cooking and preferably looking after our children as well. That's where I'll be. <laughs> do you get kids' clubs in the UK holidays? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. Pontins and okay. well, there's a whole new world for it to open up to. Exactly. <laughs> and in the meantime, you can always watch old reruns of A Place in the Sun or something. And yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Okay, guys. So uh, thanks for chatting and uh, catching up about all your learnings during lockdown. Of course, uh, for all those listening, you will uh, keep us accountable to what we've said we're going to do and not going to do on the other side of this. And as always, if you enjoyed what you've heard, give us a a rating, share and like. We'd love to hear your views and opinions. Get back to us on what's going on in your business during lockdown. 